Good day, everyone. In our previous lectures, we have talked about the selection of motors, propellers, flight controllers, and so on. However, the most important thing to power all these devices are the batteries on the drone. The batteries play a crucial role of providing the required power to the various components of the drone. Therefore, the selection of proper batteries is important for flying of the drone. Our current chapter focuses on understanding the role and selection of the batteries for the drone. Let's begin our first lecture in this area with understanding the role of batteries and the power distribution board. A drone battery is the foundational component of a quadcopter and must be considerately selected to achieve an ideal balance between performance and flight time. Unmanned aerial vehicles and drones come in all sizes, ranging from hand-launched micro UAVs to large-scale versions that utilize jet propulsion, internal combustion engines, or electric motors. But it, when it comes to micro UAVs and smaller format UAVs, the most common method for the, that, are, that is used are lithium-ion battery configurations that power the electric motors. Common requirements for UAV batteries include high energy to weight ratio, high discharge rates, five minute to two hour missions, resilience to shock and vibration, and fuel gauging to indicate remaining mission time. Battery packs are more than a simple configuration of cells. They are carefully engineered products with many safety features. The main components of a battery pack includes the cells, the primary energy source, the battery management system, a printed circuit board assembly that provides the intelligence system or to the system with features such as fuel gauging and protection circuitry. The enclosure, either a plastic enclosure, plastic exoskeleton frame, or shrink ramp PVC wrapper, and external contacts or connectors. Power is the bane of drone pilots. You would like to fly longer, which means a bigger battery, but a bigger battery will weigh more, which leads to less flight time. You have to strike a balance for consumer drones that balance is about 20 minutes of flight time, more or less. So you have to ba balance the battery size as well as weight to how much time you have to actually fly. This is a very tricky task to do, but however, in our current chapter, we will definitely focus on how to do it. As the name implies, drone power distribution board is a printed circuit board that is used to distribute the power from your flight battery to all different components of the multi-rotor. Prior to PDBs become, becoming common, it was necessary to connect all the different components using wire and the result often resembled an octopus and weighed a considerable amount due to amount of copper and solder joining the wires. There are many different PDBs available from many, various manufacturers. The majority of them provide very similar features. Initially, PDBs were very simple and were just a thick copper PCB with an input and multiple outputs. As the need for regulated voltages for various components has become more common, manufacturers have begun including voltage regulators on the PDB so that voltage sensitive components can be fed reliable, stable, and clean power. This is especially important when dealing with video components that are often sensitive to electrical noise generated by the motors and ESCs during flight. Since the initial use in the late 1980s, LiPo's have developed a huge amount. The lithium-ion battery was first developed by M. Stanley Wettingham in the 1970s while at Exxon. Exxon manufactured his battery, but the battery constituents were too expensive and too volatile to be made into a commercial product. The term lithium-ion represents a class of batteries in which lithium ions move between the cathode and the anode. The makeup of the cathode, the anode, and the electrode, electrolyte separating the two are what define the different subtypes of lithium ion batteries. Over the years, scientists made many attempts to commercialize lithium ion batteries by experimenting with different cathodes, anodes, and electrolytes to make them cheaper, safer, and more reliable. These advancements culminated in Sony releasing the first commercial lithium ion battery in 1991. Today, nearly 50 years after Whittingham's discovery, lithium-ion and its subtype, lithium-polymer, 
have become the predominant battery type for energy intensive devices from laptops to drones. The reason it took so long was due to the sheer number of constraints that batteries must satisfy before entering the market. Energy density is but one constraint that batteries must satisfy in the aviation industries. Batteries must also be cheap, powerful, reliable, safe, versatile, and long lasting. For example, sulfur cathode lithium has four times the energy stored in a traditional LiPo battery, enough to fly an aircraft for four or more hours. But the problem is that they are prone to failure and typically need to be replaced after charge, 50 charge discharge cycles, which is far too few for a mission critical application like aviation. Similarly, silicon anode batteries can achieve two to 10 times the energy density of existing batteries, but also have a limited number of charge discharge cycles and cost tens of thousands of dollars per cell. Battery technology is science, not engineering, and science always moves at a much slower, unpredictable pace. For the aviation industry, this means that a manned, long-range, commercial, battery-powered aircraft is many, many years away. Are all drones powered by batteries? For most part, all recreational and hobby drones are powered by batteries. As a craft, they need something portable that allows them to fly without attachments and also a lightweight option that would weigh the entire device down. Most drones are powered by electric batteries, so there is no need to buy a new set every time they rent run out. A drone might come with its own charger and battery pack, or you'll have to purchase it separately and you can recharge them when they run out. There are different options for the types of battery, but this will be usually determined by the manufacturer when they make the drone. Some larger drones are powered by gas, but these are generally reserved for commercial use. Swim makers and industrial work that requires heavy lifting might use a gas-powered drone because they are capable of carrying big loads and don't require recharging. But for hobbyists and recreational pilots, the battery is the best option. Battery voltage is a potential energy difference between the positive and the negative terminals. A higher drone battery voltage allows the pack to move more, provide more power to the quadcopter without increasing the current or ampere draw. A standard lithium power cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, hence to increase the power that a single lipo pack can deliver, these cells are grouped together in series, meaning the ground negative lead from the first cell is connected to the positive lead to of the next cell, forming a chain of individual cells to increase the overall battery pack voltage. LiPo packs are commonly sold in 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, or 6S configurations, where the S digit followed by the S stands for the number of cells in the specific pack. The more cells that are grouped together, the more voltage the overall battery pack will have. The battery pack voltage is important as it impacts the maximum motor speed of a quadcopter. This is explained further here, but simply more battery voltage allows the motors to spin with greater speed. For this region, 4S LiPos are the most commonly used for racing quadcopters as they provide a balance between speed and weight. It is important to note that the quadcopter applications are, are, have many different battery requirements. Exotic setups such as 5S 150mm racing quadcopters or 2S micro brush quadcopters do exist. However, they are just quite uncommon. Battery capacity is measured in milliamp hours, which is a unit describing the current a battery can supply for a unit of time. As an example, a 1500 milliamp hours battery would be able to supply 1500 milliamps, 1.5 amperes of current for an hour, 3000 milliamps, 3, uh, 3 amperes of current for a total of 30 minutes, or 6000 milliamps, 6 amperes for a 15 minutes, and so on. A higher milliamp rating on a battery essentially means that it will provide more flight time per charge. When choosing a battery, a sacrifice must be made between the battery size and the weight. A larger capacity battery will provide a longer flight time. However, the added weight will restrict the performance of the quadcopter by increasing the craft's momentum 
thereby making it respond in a more sluggish manner. In racing scenarios, the usual selected battery capacities for a 220-sized quadcopter range from 1000 mAh to 1500 mAh, with 1300 mAh packs being the most common. On average, a 1300 mAh 4S pack will last for about 3 minutes in a racing quadcopter, although flight time is entirely dependent on the manner in which the craft is flown. A professional racing pilot can easily discharge a 1300 mAh 4S pack in under 2 minutes compared to a slower flying beginner who may be experienced up to 5 minutes of flight time with a similar battery. When flying longer or faster circuits, many professional race pilots will actually switch from 1300 mAh 4S pack to heavier 1500 mAh battery to reduce the need for battery voltage management during a race. In order to achieve increased flight time, Long-range quadcopter pilots will use even larger batteries up to 2200 mAh as flight performance is of less regard to them than flight time. To summarize, we discussed about the role of batteries, power distribution on board, history of batteries, and whether all batteries are, are, are required by drones for power. We also looked briefly at the drone cells and voltages and the C rating of the batteries of the drones. With Getting an introduction to batteries in our current lecture, let's look at what are the types of batteries with their advantages and disadvantages in the next lecture. Thank you very much.